Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Wednesday, March 16th. And I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and Slash TF, which is the Small Cap 2000. And I want to start here on Slash ES, and I always start on the uh, the four-hour chart. I call this the anchor chart, right? So this is the chart that kind of controls everything. You take everything that you can get from the four-hour chart, and then you apply it to the middle, from the smaller time frames. You take the bias from the four-hour chart, and then you apply it to the smaller time frames to time your entries. So when we look at this, obviously on Sunday night, we had a beautiful, beautiful four-hour sell trigger. There's your trigger right there, all the way back down to middle blue Keltner. And of course, middle blue Keltner held as support. And then we, we did kind of catch right back up to the upside. Okay, and this support right here, it's this is important to understand. That support right there came from the one-hour chart. See how it came from the one-hour chart support? So this right here is the middle blue Keltner on the four hour chart. And then the support came right here. Look at that reversal star off to the races back up to the upside. And then recently we just caught a little bit of a sell trigger here. And so of course, here's our 2015. So there's our high. Bulls failed to take this higher. And so we do need to be potentially looking um, for this to maybe retrace back up. So let's let's talk about the one hour chart. Let's write these numbers down. We got 2011 to 2013 back up to the upside. And then taking off to the downside, let's write down 2001 to 1999 if the price decides to want to get off to the races back down to the downside. Now when we now we move over uh, to the plot chart and trying to time our entries here, right? So there's the 2015, that's a five day high. And then there was that support low right there. And then price literally took off going into the end of the day. But the bulls failed to go higher than where they, they were able to take it on Monday. So we let's look at all of the options for tomorrow. This isn't a bad chart. So let's look at all of the options and kind of play this around so you know exactly if price goes here, you do this. If price goes here, you do this. Let's first talk about going uh, to the upside. So of course there's your resistance right there. There's the last resistance. Honestly, there's a not lot. There's a not a lot going on uh, to the upside tomorrow, right? So there's your resistance right there. If it gets above that and holds pullback, it's likely to just go ahead and run all the way up to that plus 0.5. So I did write down 2011 to 2013 on the one hour chart, on the uh, four hour chart. puts us basically right around that 2, uh, 14, 2 or 15. And so uh, going higher will be tough. If this price goes higher, breaks that high, holds pullback, it's going to be tougher. Likely it's going to want to want to run into the plus 0.5. If you want to potentially try and look for sell triggers here, you can. But beware that you're going to be selling a new five-day high right here, which can be very, very uh, nerve-wracking. So if you'd rather go higher and then look to sell, we can probably smack this chart back down on Thursday. That might be the better option if this goes higher. Let's quickly talk about if it goes lower. So the first thing it goes lower, obviously, is you got to potentially look uh, for support coming in on buy value area high trade. So you can kind of see how this works. You do have potential for value area high holding as support. Again, this doesn't really match up to anything on the longer time frames. Um, uh, so that's basically the only thing you're going to be matching up there is value area high. And then, of course, it's basically value area low. Uh, right there uh, from Tuesday. So now, here's the big trade tomorrow if we get it. Here's the big trade. Okay, we just wrote down 2001 to 1999, which does put us right around here. But here's the big trade for tomorrow. So that doesn't really match up, right? So that's not that's a bad thing. But here's the big trade for tomorrow. It's a potential for an 80% rule. Price gets through holds pullback you got a target there on Wednesday's POC holds pullback your final target is going to be Friday's POC and value area low when price exit value and then it gets back inside just like it gets back inside here and if these bears get after it you got value area low 
all the way down there on Friday's POC, and it's the minus 0.5 deviation, and it's exactly to the tick where the bears took the chart right there. So we have a lot of structure to the downside. We do not have a lot of structure to the upside. Of course, you can potentially look for buy triggers if it happens there as well. So you can be looking for potential buy triggers is there. We got a lot of different trades going on. Basically, where chart is now is crappy. We just need this to make its move, and then we can follow suit after that. Let's quickly talk about the TF chart because that's a little bit different, and there's some different opportunity here. TF chart got after it to the downside. And so there is absolutely potential for this chart to come in and catch some support tomorrow. Look at this, you had support right there. Look at this, you got the four hour buy trigger back up to the upside. It's trying to form another four hour buy trigger right here. And you can kind of see how this will likely come down and want to swoop back up. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, we're likely to get that swoop on Thursday. So let's write these numbers down. Middle blue Keltner is going to put us at 10.69 to 10.71. And if it really gets after it, 10.76 to 10.78, back up to the upside. And now we can go ahead and look on our plot chart here. And this absolutely has a lot of potential for an 80% rule to the upside. So this is kind of going to get awkward, right? I mean... These, these charts went different ways yesterday, so it's going to get very awkward tomorrow. ES and TF, it's going to be weird going to decide on what these charts want to do. But it, VA low is already holding as support. So you can kind of see here, buy value already low. It's already holding as support as we speak right now. Not in anything, though. Um, but for me to want to look for an 80% rule, it would need to get through Friday's POC, hold the pullback and then we're likely to make a run obviously um, right there value very high take your profits so there's your 80 percent rule uh, to the upside uh, right there right price has come outside of value if we get back above friday's poc and hold that pullback more than likely we're going to run and go ahead and touch VA high and that's a lot of money from here to here depending on how much contracts you trade that's the plan to the upside of course you wouldn't want to just sell right there because you're so close to the plus 0.5 that you might want to wait, but uh, you will potentially see some triggers here or here. But you got to remember that four hour chart's going to be coming, and we just wrote down the number 1076 to 1078, which puts us right basically on that plus one on Monday's POC. So if you do sell, you got to make sure it looks gorgeous and take your profits early because that four-hour chart at any time could just make a run and kick you out of your trade. And now, quickly, we go lower. I don't have much. Honestly, I don't have much if we go lower. Here's our here's our basically line in the sand. There's our five-day low at 1052-ish. So if this sucker makes a run and pulls pullback, I think we're likely to run into Thursday's POC in the minus 0.5. It's going to be awkward. Honestly, if the charts ES and TF get weakness, the ES is the best chart. ES and TF get, get, get uh, strength, TF's the best chart. So we have a lot of opportunity tomorrow. You might want to wake up early. Comment if you have any questions. Please make sure you're recording everything you're doing. Send it to me and send pictures of your trades and post them and so you can get feedback from others not just me but you can get feedback from others as well and you're and you're learning from your mistakes and, and uh, comment if you have any questions